just a quick charge of the supercomputer sorry about the 15 kilohertz wine young people good morning all today i want to take a look at this it's a little buck boost converter which has what looks like four mosfets but they're not because you can see this one looks slightly different because it's got these two cut in sides I'll just get a little bit nearer yeah so this is a different component this is a, a diode it's a dual diode both these legs here are actually connected together so it's a three MOSFET buck boost converter now I thought when I bought it it was going to be a little bit like the LTC 3780 this thing with its four MOSFETs surrounding an inductor and they've done a similar layout I suppose to make it look a bit like this but it's not the same chip now the chip has been ground you can't really see anything on it apart from possibly 46 I don't know in fact let's see if we can see that yes you may just be able to make out 46 on the end of that chip number now I don't know what it is the other thing that's interesting on here is there's no op amp so it's obviously measuring the small voltage on that current sense resistor but it's not multiplying it up that must be done in the chip so is it a special purpose chip because a microcontroller wouldn't have enough gain on its a to d converter to measure that tiny voltage is it a special purpose buck boost converter chip i don't know incidentally if you're hearing a lot of whining noise in the background i am experimenting with making this video with the ant miner the heater running because i will need to run the heater in the winter i'm hoping the phone will do a good job of um, recognizing the pattern of that sound and eliminating it i hope so let's connect this thing up now i normally use these things to convert to 2.1 and on this occasion positive input is at the bottom which means that this gets to be the right way up so that you can see the plus and the minus on it just a little tiny thing but you know it's those little things that sometimes can make all the difference right so let's put some power into there okay straight out of the lithium power pack into here oh bit of a spark but the lights on so the power pack didn't complain no no error message so we got some uh, voltage coming out I'll just go and get a DVM things I dislike about meter probes they're way too long so they get in the way I can't fit these in there and get everything in shot useless and also they won't stay in these holes because of the way the ends are tapered Do you know I'm not sure I can be bothered with this I think I'm gonna go and get some banana plugs to I don't know crimp terminals or something yeah this is more like it they're a bit short but um, I'm hoping this will work okay that's negative that's got to go there yeah it's gonna be a bit uh, <laughs> I in these situations I normally have to make up bespoke cables but I'll see if I can get away with this anything's got to be better than meter probes so we've got eight volts coming out now my guess is that little red LED which you can't see at the moment there it is is directly across the output so it should tolerate whatever the maximum voltage is here's the CV adjuster let's get that right I set the uh, pocket clip so that it's in the same orientation as the uh, blade inside there so to make it easier to find the blade right let's wind it up now I've got about 12 volts coming in from my power pack take this all the way to the top and it's a tad over 30 volts okay let's wind it down and then I can put a suitable in fact let's wind it down so it's doing one to one and then I'll put a suitable load on it 12 volts oh a bit of overshoot on the output capacitors there 
Now this device came from eBay seller XS Par, X Spa maybe. Uh, it was eight dollars thirty nine free shipping, and it's a five to thirty volt on the input to one point two five to thirty volt on the output. Step up, down, boost, buck, CVCC. There are two potentiometers there, and this overshoot actually has proved a point in that it is a buck boost but let's take it further down to well and truly prove the point take it down to about five volts yes I mean it's definitely a buck boost uh, converter okay I'm gonna put a load on it now so that we can get some current flowing through it so I have here a 24 volt vehicle bulb, uh, some magnets to attach the second connector there, that one I've soldered on. I did it this way so that I didn't um, solder on the outside of the bayonet so that I could put this bulb back to a usable state if I so desire. Okay, so that's got that 5 volts going through it. Let's clamp that down. And 5 volts, oh yeah, just about seems to be enough to illuminate the bulb. Okay, let's start turning that up. Now, 24 volt bulb should be good for, well, the alternator in a car gets to about 14, so this should be good for about 28. In fact, it'll probably be fine on 30 volts. Oh, the camera's adjusting, which is why you see what looks like backward jumps in brightness, but they're not. It's the camera's aperture adjusting to the brightness of the bulb. Now I've no idea how many volts we've got coming out uh, because I can't stick my probes in there at the same time as the bulb. Well I probably could if I made up some special leads. Now the constant current adjuster is here. Um, how much current will this bulb be taking? Yeah, a fair amount I suppose. Let's wind that down instead until it kicks in. Well, that's kicked in very quickly. Yes, I mean, I only need to turn that up a little bit and there's ample current. Bear in mind, this is an 8 amp unit. So I presume this pot is sweeping from close to zero to 8 amps. So it won't take many turns to provide the amp or so we need for this thing. Right, let's use the meter probes. I suppose how they're intended to be used for sort of temporary brief measurements. Make sure I'm not in the 10 amp. One, of course, that would be bad. Although, of course, because this has got current limiting, it wouldn't kill the uh, pluses at the bottom, isn't it? Negative at the top. Okay, so that's currently on 16.4 volts. So, yeah, this is a perfectly usable but boost converter. Of course, I can't talk for the output ripple if we were really concerned about things like that. Of course, we're not with a bulb. Uh, we could put a scope on it, I suppose. So, what do I want this buck boost converter for actually that's interesting is it getting warm no not in the slightest but then we're only drawing well about one amp is it if it's a 20 watt bulb 21 watt 24 volts yeah it'd be about one amp and of course i'm at a lower voltage so it'd be less than that yeah what i want to do is i want to build lithium battery packs uh, this is a four cell i want to build a three cell a four cell a five cell and just experiment with lots of different types but I want really to have them connected together so that you can charge one from the previous one but they'll all be different voltages so I'm going to need some buck boost converters to potentially step uh, the voltage up from say a three cell pack to this four cell pack for example so I suppose what I'm trying to do is look for the cheapest because that's what I do um, CVCC because it really needs constant current if I'm charging a lithium battery pack from another lithium battery pack because of course the uh, BMS boards the protection boards that you get for these lithium packs don't do any form of current limiting I mean they may do an overall maximum current uh, limit for the load output but they're not going to do any current limiting for the charging current coming in so that does need to be set on the unit that's transferring energy from one pack to another so yeah cc cv uh, buck boost because i might need to be going up in voltage i might need to be going down 
converter that don't cost much money. Okay, let's wind the voltage up. Get this bulb nice and bright. I'll get it up to about 24 volts, but I don't think it matters much if I go a bit beyond that. Let's measure that. Oh, that is 30 volts. Right, let's wind this back a bit. Because that probably is troubling that bulb a little bit. Oh, what's going on there? Yeah, that's because these silly um, ridges on the probes so that you can't have them next to each other. And if you do, one sits in front or behind the other and then you get a lousy connection. I mean, okay, I realise they're for high voltage, but I don't want them. Okay, 26 and a half volts. Now, since we know that this lamp is drawing about one amp, oh, I'm supposed to be using my pot twiddler for this, I can turn the constant current pot down until we get some reaction from it, which is there. So we know that's set to about one amp. I'll bring that down so it's a little bit dim. So, hmm, what are we guessing? Half an amp? So I'm just wondering if we can do something a little bit spicy and charge this SuperCat module from here with no anti-backfeed diode. Because some of these power supplies say, oh, you must use an anti-backfeed diode. Well, let's not bother. So I've wired the output of this up to um, the supercapacitor. I've put an ammeter in there just as a bit of a concession. And also because it helped me reach with the wires. Yes, that's really the only reason I did it. Let's turn this on. No idea what the settings are. Um, oh, there's not much current. I'm not sure whether that... Oh, that is on. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's turn up the voltage. No, it must be the current that I set low. Oh, I don't know what I've done. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Now the voltage was set on about 24 volts, wasn't it? So that must be just coming up. But why have I got no current? The problem I was having was the current pot was too high and the power pack, which has a 3 amp limit, was going into limit. Right, let's start tweaking the current up. And, uh, well, we can go for about an amp to start with. Oh, it's quite sensitive, this pot. So an amp will bring this up gradually. The bulbs will indicate what the voltage on this module is. Now, that's interesting. As the voltage on the output is going up, so the current is increasing without me adjusting anything. So let's wind that back a bit. I don't want to get beyond the three amps that's coming in from my power pack but yeah as the voltage goes up the current climbs up so it's not a very constant current adjustment is it not really no so that's still creeping up so I'll wind that down oops yeah it's quite sensitive at this low end and that's sort of half an amp one amp so this really is better tuned for higher current. Now you can set it, but it's pretty twitchy. And it keeps climbing up. We'll keep that under an amp. Yes, yeah, so I've been turning my power bank on and off and it just keeps erroring and seeing more than three amps. So maybe there's a bit of surge current even when this is set under one amp. Is that the minimum current actually? That, yeah, because that's clicking. So 180 milliamps once the voltage gets to this point, which is, I don't know, four or five volts probably. Does seem to be the minimum current. And that shoots up pretty quickly when you raise the pot. Okay, well that's good to know. In fact, I'm quite keen to leave that set on its minimum current and as this voltage comes up, see what the minimum current actually is on this thing. That fell back then, didn't it? Maybe we'd be better off with this supercapacitor because it's got a voltmeter so we can see the voltage. Now, is it going to get across when I put this quite heavy load across it. 
Yeah. No, 90 milliamps. That seems all right. There's no voltage, which is why the output LED is not on. Let's raise the current a bit. And we've got an amp. And we'll watch the voltage on this come up. It's about two and a half volts. And that current is really quite climbing quite quickly, isn't it? Without me turning it. So constant current, it ain't. I mean, it will be if you've got a constant voltage output or a load, which is a constant voltage, draws a constant voltage, presents, a, I don't know what the word is. But yeah, that's really climbing up quickly. Let's turn that down to an amp. So for supercaps, I'm not sure about this one. It's not really very constant. How are we doing? Coming up to seven and a half volts. Super duper. Now I suppose this is what you get with a cheap power supply. I must admit, I'm not very impressed with the lack of constant current. It doesn't seem to be measuring the current in the absence of other measurements because it just it just isn't very constant yeah that's quite strange let's wind that back down again interesting power supply so i have now put um, a diode in the output of this thing because i'm just having problems switching this power bank the one that's feeding this on and off it just keeps erroring but that didn't help actually. The only thing that helps is to turn the constant current pot right down to zero. It has a cutout at three amps, but it does seem to not like this sort of five or six hundred milliamps. Maybe a surge appears at the front end of this thing or something. I'll turn that down to minimum again. This is up nearly to 16 volts, so the light should start coming on soon. I was going to say in anticipation of these lights coming on, but they've come on already. Um, I'll set this down to about 500 milliamps so that I don't uh, overcharge these capacitors. But yeah, that's taken it up to 16.2 volts successfully. That's fine. Now, if I turn this pot right down to 150 milliamps, turn my power bank off so that we've got zero, we've got that diode in there, turn it back on and yes it has successfully come on so that's fine so I can keep a little trickle current running into there to keep it topped off. Well I think that's enough experiments on this thing. Yes the constant current is a little bit floaty it's not very constant, but it might be okay for transferring charge from one lithium ion battery pack to another. When I start building these battery packs, we'll find out. But for the moment, I think that's probably enough testing of that thing. So cheerio.